The Lord reigns. He is robed in majesty. The Lord is robed in majesty and is armed with strength. Your throne was established long ago. You are from all eternity. The seas have lifted up, O Lord. The seas have lifted up their voice. The seas have lifted up their pounding waves. Mightier than the thunder of the great waters. Mightier than the breakers of the sea. The Lord on high is mighty. Welcome to Majesty. My name is Ron McKinney. I'm pastor of Kinsey Drive Baptist Church in Dalton, Georgia. I might just add that I'm beginning my 29th year as pastor of Kinsey Drive Baptist Church. That's a long time, but I'm grateful that I've been able to be a part of this community of saints. These folks have become so dear and precious to me. One of the things about being a pastor is you get to know your people over a period of time. I've always told young pastors, don't be in a rush to go to another church. Stay there. Be there for the people. And over the years, these past 28 years, I've had time to be with these great saints and love on them. I've been with them through all kinds of things, their birth of their children, birth of their grandchildren, the death of their parents. I mean, whatever has happened, and I've been able to be a part of it because they are my family. They're more of my family, really, than my family, because according to Scripture, those that are in Christ are brothers and sisters in Him. So I'm grateful to be a part of it. And one of the things that we've done is through the years, we've had this program called Majesty. And Majesty was something that was started in order to proclaim the unsearchable riches of Jesus Christ. And along the way, I have been able to meet some wonderful people. And I'm talking about people that I have known, and then I have a reconnecting, I guess you would say, with them after a few years. And today my guest is one of those that I'm so pleased to see and have an opportunity to talk with her. Her name is Cherry Brown Robertson. Now, I knew Cherry, and welcome, by the way, Cherry, to Thank the program. And uh, I knew you back in 90, I had to be somewhere in 96, 94, something like that. Uh, you were a student at uh, Southeast High School with my daughter, Heather uh, McKinney. And uh, uh, you were a cheerleader. Correct. Yeah, <laughs> we were just talking about, you used to come to this studio way yes. back then because we had a program. You remember that? I do, yeah. yes. It was the Raiders Roundtable. That's right. And I am celebrating my 20th reunion this year, so it was probably between 20, 22 years ago that, you that I've here. been here, yes. My. We, just, we were commenting how quickly that time goes by. And, and uh, that always reminds me what Scripture says about life being a vapor. Uh, it's a bubble. It just, right. It's just for a moment, and of course, I'm way on the other side, so I, I can look back and I say, it really does go quickly. But I enjoyed so much my time there. In fact, I was able to be the host of the Raider Roundtable mm -hmm. for a number of years and uh, met so many wonderful people. And one of my joys is seeing Raider uh, students that I knew who have now got into the workplace, and I run into them everywhere. Mm -hmm. And uh, to see them taking on responsibilities in different areas of life. Uh, tell me a little bit, uh, before I talk to you about your family, which I want to talk about, uh, what did you do as far as uh, you, the years, maybe I would say, right after graduation? Did you get married quickly or? I did, <laughs> I did. In fact, I tell everyone that my husband was my high school sweetheart, but he didn't know it. <laughs> so the day I met him, I went home, told my best friend that that's who I was gonna marry. How about that? So um, as soon as I graduated, I went and got a job where he was working. 
and How about that? been there, been with him ever since. You know, that's a smart thing to do. I did. God, <laughs> God placed it on my heart. I yeah. knew. You know what? If, if more would see that, and there was something that you saw in him that made you feel that way. Uh, I happened to know Ricky, and I, I knew a little bit about him, and he was such a gentleman, mm -hmm. and he was a kind person person and uh, someone and then you you saw that in him and uh, you you put yourself where you could at least get an opportunity to right. meet him anyway <laughs> well you married then and what yes. year was that then? we married in 2000 and 2000 I had graduated in 98 we dated for the two years yes. prior to that married in 2000 yes. um, immediately start he immediately started working at the sheriff's department okay Okay. Now, is he still with the Sheriff's Department? He is not. Okay. No, he works for a bank doing the security okay. and the fraud and okay. things like that. Good, good, good. Well, and, and then uh, w tell me exactly what happened afterwards. Were you, uh, did you go into business at that time? I did. I started out in insurance in 2001. Just wanted to do it part-time, just something to yeah, have some money. Yeah. Started out in 2001 and it got in my blood and that's what I've been doing since. Yeah. You know, I, I've, uh, I've remarked uh, to my family in particular how God has used you and blessed you. Uh, here's what I want to say because I think this is important in your, in your work and what you've done. Uh, I know because I've talked to you is that you have a philosophy of how you approach mm -hmm. life. You have uh, things that are in order and maybe for me, uh, you know, I'm, I'm almost 75 years old, and I, I think, what a wonderful way to approach life. Tell me, uh, give me again what your philosophy is as far as life mm -hmm. is going. How you prioritize your life. First and foremost is my Savior, Jesus Christ. He is even above my family. Mm. And then, of course, it's my family, my husband, my children. Yes. And then after that, I sell a little bit of insurance while I'm here. Yeah. Well, so. now, tell me how many children you have. I have two. I have Caleb, who is 18, yes. and Caitlin is 12. And uh, Caitlin, is she at Southeast? No, she's, she's still at the middle school. Middle she's school. at Eastbrook. Okay, at Eastbrook. I know that your son just graduated. Right. And he's in, where is he attending? He's attending Dalton State. Dalton State. And then State. next semester, right. he's wanting to go to Georgia Tech. Fantastic. I, I kind of watched him grow up uh, maybe on Facebook if yes. not been able to see it. I saw him back when we had the, the ball, the heart ball. Mm -hmm. You were involved with that. Correct. And uh, is that something you've done before? It is. I am the, um, it is the auction chair organi organizer basically. Yeah. And I'm in charge of getting the donorships and those type of things so that we can auction off the items. And I have Caleb volunteer each year <laughs> to help. So yeah. he's there. I want him to see um, the good side of Dalton. I want him, because you don't yeah. hear about all of those things. So That's I want true. him to see um, how much money this community can raise when it comes together and yeah. joins forces for something. It is me. You know, I have, uh, I came in from Dallas, Texas. Uh, we were in a, a city north. It's called Plano, Texas, which now has gotten very large. We moved there and the late 70s and they had like 16,000 people when we left 13 years later to come here they had like 360,000 I mean wow. it just was mushroomed but I never had the sense that people were so generous and giving especially towards nonprofit religious organizations since I've been here I've been a part of a number of organizations that are nonprofit some have been religious in nature, and, and they, the city seems to pour out. The, the surrounding area, mm -hmm. there's such support. But the ball, let, let's just mention, because it was exciting for me as yes. well. <laughs> uh, Heidi was participating. Yes, we had the honor of having Heidi create a painting yes. specifically for the ball this year. And it's one of those things that each year, I think, Oh, we can't top that. That okay. was amazing. But then the next year, the community just proves me wrong. Yeah. And with Heidi's painting, it was one of those, up to this point, that is the highest paid item that we've had. Oh. And it's, 
and well, I, ha I don't want to top it, but at the same time, yeah, you, you, you kind of want to. And, and I think as she would say, yes, let's see it topped, because she, she is interested in things that help people. And of course, this was a charitable mm -hmm. type of event. And she's been a part of a lot of different she charitable has. events over the years, she some has. big ones and some uh, small ones, and, and always interested in helping. But yeah, the, the, it was sold for $5,500 in the auction, and Heidi was beside herself. Because oh, it, was wasn't, it wasn't that she didn't get any of the money, and that's mm -hmm. a, but it was just that it gave her a sense of my, the value of what she's doing. Because, right. you know, she didn't paint very much at all when she was sick. And then she found that that was something that she mm -hmm. could do. It so was a beautiful it, moment. It, it, it was. was. It was. And my understanding is the painting is going to be hung in the new hospital, the cancer hospital, people's uh, hospital. And what an honor. It's been great. But you've, you've been involved in a lot of different charitable events. Mm -hmm. Now, this is something that I admire you for, and again, I think there's a reason for it. I, uh, I want people to understand, sometimes people do things to be recognized. Some have an ulterior motive when they give money. Mm -hmm. uh, some people, you know, it's just a matter of it makes them look good, but on the other hand, some people are motivated by something different. And you mentioned earlier that Christ is first mm -hmm. and foremost. And what I've seen in you is your giving really is not something that's just attached to you. Uh, now, your business is sometimes displayed, which is wonderful. You have a business mm -hmm. and you, and, but on the other hand, the things that you're doing is because you see that Christ has given you so much, a family and all the things that come with that, and he's given us salvation, first of all, and therefore our heart, we want to give back. Right. I've always said there's two laws that the Bible speaks of in the New Testament, and that is to love the Lord thy God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and the second is like unto that. And that is to love your neighbor as yourself. Mm -hmm. So love is the most powerful thing in all the world. And if yes. you love Jesus, if you love Jesus, then you want to love others. Right. I love what you said too about your husband. I think, I think you mentioned this, that you, you love Christ more than your husband. Mm -hmm. Now people say, well, that doesn't sound right. Oh, but that is right. It is right, yes. <laughs> when we um, first got married, we went through marriage counseling prior to getting married. Yes. And our pastor said it's like a triangle with Christ at the top. The closer you and your husband draw to Christ, the closer you draw to yourself. Mm. And something else that one of my guidelines and one of my, my morals is I love my husband more than my children. Mm -hmm. And that will a lot of times raise eyebrows, but... Yeah. The more you love Christ, it just feeds that love for your husband, Absolutely. which in turn feeds the love for your children. And I've always said, I want someone who chases Christ more so than chases me. Amen. So. Oh, I tell you, I love to hear it. It's so, it's music to my ears because uh, I've, I've, I've preached for a long time, I've been here in this city, and I've tried to reach people through the medium of television and print and whatever it might be, but the thing that I want them to see that the love of Christ, it constrains us, as mm -hmm. the scripture says. It draws us. And if you know Christ, and that's why I have, a, I have something, Cherry, that I, I'm concerned about is that sometimes people profess to be Christians and yet their life doesn't reflect mm -hmm. that. Because Christianity is not just a, a label that we have. Right. You don't just mark it on the, you know, that I'm a Christian. It's, it's, a, it's, it, it's a total, it possesses you. And the Apostle Paul, you know, I, I, I think of him, you know, he was man obsessed with Christ. 
and there is nothing for me to live is Christ and to mm -hmm. die is gain and uh, that to me is, is so so yeah. wonderful to know now when a couple has that and and you and Ricky obviously have that is really poured out I think into your children mm -hmm. and they see that I hope so and what you want is and we we as parents what do we want from our children? I don't want them just to be healthy, wealthy, and wise. Right. Yes, we have always said we are raising adults. We're not raising kids. We want adults yeah. who will be pillars in the community, who will stand for what's right and what for Christ Absolutely. wants. And we've always told them what you do, always remember, is a reflection on your family. And what you Beautiful. do can hinder your children's chances. Absolutely. So I've always told them that before you react, before you do anything, say, is it something God would want to want me to do? And how will this impact my kids if I do it? Yes. So if, if they just look, and it's so easy for kids to just stay in the now and just to look for right now, but they'll yes. just look into the future yeah. a little bit so, and how yeah. it can impact them. You know, and, uh, and for Ricky, uh, you, you are an honoring him and that you, you're a wife who gives honor to him is you. because he has a tremendous responsibility. He said. Uh, I've done this a number of times when I've spoken at places and I have the opportunity to talk about fathers because the Bible says specifically fathers bring up your children in the mm -hmm. nurture and the admonition of the Lord. It doesn't say mothers, though mothers involved. It doesn't say church, pastor, or deacons, or somebody else, or school. It says fathers. Now, fathers have to take that responsibility. Right. But they need their helpmate. They need a wife that comes along and supports that. And that's what makes a loving family. And it, 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 it spilled over in just every area of life. Mm -hmm. and, and the children have a sense of security having parents like that, seeing that love between them. And I, I'm grateful that that's what I see in you and Ricky. I might mention too, uh, as we go along here, I, I keep thinking about some of the people that uh, you and I know you were in school with. Uh, one is Tracy uh, Dempsey. Yes. Now, she was farmer, was it not? Farmer, yes. Yeah, that's kind of interesting to you. Mm -hmm. You are with Farmers Insurance, <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't, I haven't forgotten that. Mm -hmm. But I, and I do want to mention it because I, I want people to know <coughs> that you have a business that is one that is uh, based upon a Christian principle. It is. And in our day, when you go to do anything, you won't have someone that is honest with you and up front. But uh, Tracy is a principal at Antioch Elementary mm -hmm. School and I happen to be teaching art yes. there uh, and Tracy has done a terrific job. She was assistant at uh, Dugget for a number of years and, and of course now she's at Antioch. But, uh, but I ran into Casey Babb. Do you remember Casey I Babb? Do, yes. She was the nurse there uh, for the county. Didn't you didn't know that? that? No. She was for the schools. I can't remember her married name. Uh, forgive me. And I run into, uh, um, her, her name slips me, uh, Constance. Constance uh, Torres is her name. Mm -hmm. She's, and and yes. just, I just, all the time I run into kids that, I, I say kids because they were with us, <laughs> but uh, I spent a lot of time at Southeast. You do know that, don't yes. you? <laughs> yes, you did. You were a fixture. I tell you what, it was, it, I, I, everybody says I went to school with my kids. But one of the things I did is I wanted to know what was going on. Yes. And I wanted, and I found some people there that were so helpful. And I, Debbie Barto was one of mm -hmm. those, and Kim Lachine, and I, I can go through Jackie Daniel. There were just a mm -hmm. number of of teachers and people that we knew from there and they were so so supportive and I you know uh, as a parent I look back and I just thank the Lord for all of those yes. those experiences uh, 
What, what exactly do you see in terms of your business? Tell me a little bit about it and, and how you, you actually are with a new company. Yes, I am with Farmers Insurance, which everyone, most people know from the theme song or the commercials, which are really good. <laughs> yes, they are. And I have to admit, whenever I was researching Farmers to see if, that, if I wanted that to be my next step and praying yeah. about it, we don't have cable at home. We, um, uh, we just don't. We yeah. had gotten to a point to where we could control the programs the kids were watching, sure. but not the commercials. So we just turned everything off. And so I didn't know the commercials. <laughs> I didn't know anything about farmers. So I had yeah. to, you know, do some yeah. research on it. Yeah. But um, found after doing a lot of prayer, found that, that I felt that was a good fit. Yes. And I've been just nearly a year now doing yeah. it, and it has mm -hmm. been such a blessing. And I, I tell everyone, and even in my prior company, you're going to hear about life insurance, but you're going to hear about Jesus as well when you walk in. Yeah, see, yeah, you don't leave your Christianity out the door when, when you talk with people. You, you, you want to. It's a part of you. It is. Now, uh, I know that some people think, well, no, you don't want to mix religion as they say with business it's not religion mm -mm. it's it's your life it is and I, I don't consider it mixing them it's you can't get me as a wife without me as a Christian you can't get me as the you know the child the aunt mm -hmm. you can't get me without me being the Christian yeah. so yeah. that to me that should be first and foremost yeah. Do you have any participation as far as the church is concerned? Are you involved? Mm -hmm. I you am, mind? yes. Tell me a little bit of what you do. Don't mind at all. Ricky and I both are deeply involved. We've I been there so. for, goodness, probably nearly 20 years whenever he and I started and dating. The church is? It's New Life Baptist. New Life Baptist It is. Church. Our pastor is Rick Spence. Yeah. And Ricky is a deacon there. We are on the missions committee where he's the president and I'm the secretary. And I'm also the assistant treasurer for the missions committee as well as for the church. Great. Um, I've been teaching the kids there. Caleb has a water ministry. Caitlin's participated. They've done missions trips. Mm. So we are deeply Wonderful. involved in our church. We are there every time the doors are open. That's great. I love people like that. I have, I've had, uh, I've had some that I that have been like that I have had a couple they are now 90 and 87 they never missed a service and they lived 40 minutes away Wow! they never missed any meeting of the church for 26 years the name is Jean and Betty Lindauer that's remarkable yes it you is. see that what they're what they were committed to was the cause of Christ and for them, though they had, they were they, the ones that developed the Labrie Symphony Orchestra. Okay. I mean, they, they are marvelous musicians. And uh, they did a marvelous work in starting the Labrie Symphony, which in, in Dalton is kind of an amazing thing. We have mm -hmm. a 60 piece symphonic that orchestra that, uh, that God brought about. But their commitment to doing whatever is necessary to the glory of God mm -hmm. and I, I've just so you've got to have people like that to have a church that will thrive it's not it doesn't thrive on numbers correct I'm not in the numbers game in fact I've had studies with young men over the years and they were not members of my church but I was preparing them and they've gone into other churches and there they've been able to flourish. And, and that's a joy to me because I'm not trying to build a kingdom. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to build God's kingdom. Right. And if you look at it that way, it changes your whole perspective. I'm not in competition with churches. Mm -hmm. Now, one time I was in a church of 3,500 people and it was competitive. What I mean is it was always how many do we have and I just, it was, it was a killer. But for me, to have people who love to come mm -hmm. and they're committed to it in every area. So a, a member of a church should be committed to a business meeting as much as they are to Sunday morning service mm -hmm. or committed to the Lord's table, to communion. These are things that I, from, a, from a Christian perspective, I've, I've tried to teach over the years. I said earlier that I was from Dallas, Texas, which is Big D, mm -hmm. and I came to Little D. <laughs> but Little D isn't so little. No, 
Dalton wow. has a lot of things that are amazing to me, and, and the one is, is that we've been able to see things thrive here that are Christian organization. The Fellowship of Christian Athletes, mm -hmm. you're familiar with that. Yes. In 1992, I met with four men. There was not one huddle group in all of the county surrounding here, not one. And uh, Chuck Allen, who used mm -hmm. to be a principal over at Eastbrook, do you remember him? Mm -hmm. uh, he was the one that brought us together. And then today, I was on the board for 13 years, but today, FCA here in, in Whitfield County and Murray County and surrounding counties, it is, it is thrive, and I was told there are 68 schools that every week there is a message about Christ presented every week so to good. 23 or 400 children so or good. students. That's wonderful. It is. My son had the opportunity to be, they host fields of faith each year and they yeah. pick a school and go to the football stadium and yeah. um, invite parents, friends, family, and he had the opportunity to be one of the speakers one year. And just, it's such a blessing to see those kids standing up for Christ right. in front of their peers and in front of their family. It, it was an honor to see my son down there and you know all what? the other kids. What's more, more precious than to see your children follow after Christ. There's absolutely and nothing Those, more those gifts that God gives to you. And children are a gift from God. The only thing that we bring into this world, and I'm saying humanly speaking, that will live eternally is the children. Mm -hmm. Now when you look at it from that perspective, you know that it's something that is of great value. Yes. Well, our time is running short. I could talk to you for much longer, Cherry. I, I want to thank you for your testimony. Thank you for your, your love of the Lord and then the love of people and how you are committed to helping others. And uh, I just pray the Lord will bless you in, in your future. Thank you. Well, let's pray together. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the privilege of being with Cherry today. I thank you for her life. I thank you for her, her love of you. And I pray, Lord, that you just be with her and bless her and her family, bless her in her ministry, bless her in her business. But most of all, I pray, Lord, that you might keep her, watch over her and protect her, and use her for your kingdom. For we ask it in Jesus' name, amen. amen. I'm so grateful you were with us today. I just want to mention that if you would write to me, at Kinsey Drive Baptist Church, 2626 Kinsey Drive, Dalton, Georgia. I'd be happy to send you a book entitled Grace Focus Optimism. It's a great book of how to live the Christian life. Until next week at the same time in the same station, may God richly bless you. He is robed in majesty. The Lord is robed in majesty and is armed with strength. Your throne was established long ago. You are from all eternity.